Bible, will you turn with me to Ephesians chapter 5? I've preached it, uh, in this chapter for years, for the years. But just one of the few things that just come to upon my heart. Ephesians chapter 5, and we'll begin to read from verse 1. I don't walk a walk and talk a talk. Therefore, Paul says, be imitators of God as dear children. What a marvelous example. And walk in love. Say walk in love. Can everybody say that? Walk in love. As Christ also has loved us and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. But fornication, that sex before marriage, fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. We're Christians now, but should be different. Would you say amen to that? We've all made mistakes. Look at me. We've all made mistakes in the past. So Nobody's condemning anybody here because if his forgiveness is real, we've all been forgiven. Amen. Amen. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator or unclean person or covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. And if you walk in disobedience, God will chastise you as a father chases his son. Therefore, do not be partakers with them, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Say, walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret, but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, Awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly. Say, walk circumspectly. And everybody say, walk circumspectly. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of Amazing chapter, folks. Amazing. And do you understand that I'm going to mention that about Acts chapter 19 because that's where this church was birthed. So let's pray. Father, will you take your word today and will you clean us? Because you said to your disciples, now you are clean through the word that I have spoken unto you. Lord, will you cleanse us of anything that shouldn't be in us? And would you fill us with the Holy Spirit? the Holy Spirit, that we may reflect Jesus Christ wherever we go. And may that start in the year with loving one another. Father, hear our cry in the name of Jesus. And everybody say it. Amen. If you read Acts chapter 19, you'll see how God, through Paul's preaching, had a major breakthrough for the Lord Jesus in the pagan city of Ephesus through meeting 12 disciples of John the Baptist who were what I would call incomplete disciples living in the Old Testament or the Old Covenant until Paul ushered them into the New Covenant through the Gospel of Christ 
these 12 men were immediately saved, baptized by total immersion in water in the name of the Lord Jesus. Paul then laid hands on them and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. They spoke in tongues and they prophesied. Folks, the gospel of Jesus Christ shook the entire pagan city of Ephesus. Will you say amen to that? That's what we need in our day. We need the power of God. And even though there was some opposition in the synagogues to Paul's preaching, he withdrew to the school of Tyrannus in the space of two to three years. All, because all, verse 10 of, of Acts chapter 20, all who dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord. Isn't that amazing? All who dwelt in Asia. You think there were seven churches in Asia as well. And, and we hear that all of Asia heard the word. So here we see men and women being born again. Souls were saved in Ephesus. Ephesus had a big temple called the Temple of Diana. And they had a thousand prostitutes, priestesses. And that's what they were there for, sex and immorality. Souls were saved. Witchcraft was defeated. Charlatans were exposed. Traditions were broken. Immorality was arrested. And people were transformed by the power of the gospel. That's what we need again in Northern Ireland. That's what we need in, in, in the United Kingdom. Paul stayed there for three years. And in Acts chapter 19 verse 11 it says, Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Now that's what we do. We anoint garments, whatever they are, whether it's a baby's garden or somebody else, or a scar, or whatever, a handkerchief, whatever, and we anoint them with oil, and we send them out to those who are sick. God was at work in Ephesus, but so was the devil. Some local Jewish exorcists tried to cast an evil spirit out of a man, the seven sons of Sceva, that's what we're called. But the evil spirit said these words, listen to this, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? The devil knows if you're real or a fake. Don't forget that. The devil knows whether you're real or false. And the man in whom the evil spirit was leapt on these men, overpowered them, and they fled out the house naked and wounded. And know what happened after that? Fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Isn't that amazing? And not only that, many who practiced magical works or whatever they were, they were saved and they brought their books and all their tarot cards, etc. And they had a bonfire with them. It wasn't the 11th of July. It was a bonfire in Ephesus and they burned all satanic things. And the revenue that they that it went up to was 50,000 shackles of silver. And that was a lot of money in those days. Lives were transformed. The gospel transforms people. Jesus Christ changes people. Can I hear an amen out there? Because listen, folks, we're going to churches all around the place and, and they go in and out the same way. We don't want that. Even tonight, I want you to leave here knowing I've been in God's presence and God's word has spoken my life and I've been out equipped for the battle. Would you say amen to that? Lives were transformed. Jesus Christ was glorified. A Christ-centered, spirit-filled church was birthed in this major, pagan, perverted, and corrupt city. Whenever Paul preached, there was either a revival or a riot or both. And you know something? That's what happens when the gospel is preached and should preach. Hell should be shaken. We heard it the other day. When you're getting up in the morning, oh no, the devil said, oh no, she's getting up, he's getting up, all hell's going to break loose on us. Yeah. And I believe we should be change agents yeah. for Jesus Christ. And I hear an amen. What a place to plant the church. Ephesus, full of paganism, Satanism, and traditionalism. Jesus knows where to build his church. And he knows who to build it with. That's why you're here tonight in the people's church. Look at 
stop and say, did you hear that? That's about you. Sadly, this amazing church had difficulties. But to begin with, in Acts 19, the men of God opened themselves to the Word and the Spirit. The Word of God was boldly proclaimed at every level. The power of God was manifested in every way. Signs and wonders confirming the Word and exposing the charlatans. The people of God came out into the open and got rid of things that were secret and sinful. Repentance without resistance. They willingly did this in front of the whole city. So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. That's my prayer when people walk in here and leave you. Their lives will never be the same again. Look at the person saying, you know, I'm going to fit up. Look at it. But look at somebody else now. They say, do you want change forever here? Sadly, this amazing Christ-centered, spirit-filled church began losing its vision. That can happen to any church. There's churches now are closed when they once were packed. Churches, this church began losing its vision losing its consciousness of sin, losing its commitment to Jesus Christ, and eventually they began leaving their first love for the Lord, and they began falling asleep to the things of God. That way, that's why Paul writes six years later to this amazing church. His letter has six chapters in it, and if you're a Bible student, you'll understand that the first three has to do with doctrine of salvation, and the second is the, the four to six chapters, four to six, the next three has to do with duty as a Christian. Or salvation and service. You can't have one without the other. Or belief and behavior. In other words, what you believe will determine how you behave. You can't believe right and live wrong. And in chapter 5, Paul writes about the Christian life as a daily walk. In fact, if you read the, the, the book of Ephesians or the letter, six times the word walk is mentioned and one time the word walked. So seven times the word walk is brought into this chapter. It's a daily walk. Your Christian life, brother and sister, is a daily walk. It's an everyday thing. It's not Sunday morning only. You get SMOs that come to this church every week. What's SMOs? Sunday morning only. Hello, brother and sister. You can hardly build them because you're only here once a week. How do you build a church with once a week visit? You can't do it. That's why you need faithfulness because stepping stones are a Monday and a Wednesday and then we're back in the Lord's day. But you say amen to that. There's a reason why we have these services. It's not for the good of our health, but what is it for the good of our health? Our Christian health? Praise the Lord. So your walk is an everyday thing. So Paul writes in contrast, contrasting walking with Jesus and walking without Jesus. So here's, I'm going to break this down, so it makes it simple. So for verses 1, this, watch the contrast, you ready? Here's the contrast, number one. We must walk in love, not lust. That's not about hate, walk, love and hate. It's about love and lust. Because he talks about fornication here, and then he talks about uncleanness, etc. So he says, walk in love, not lust. And verses 8 to 14, he talks about walking in light and not darkness. In verses 15 to 16, walk soberly, not foolishly. In verse 17, walk wisely, not unwisely. Verses 18 to 20, walk spiritually, be filled with the Spirit. Don't walk or don't drink and all that stuff, not carnally. Don't walk spiritually, not carnally. And I have to tell you, there's more churches now you think you can drink it and it's okay. Brothers and sister, that's not right. That is not right. A Christian, I believe a Christian should be told love. Now, I, I, listen, 
50 people left this church when I said that on Sunday morning, but I don't care because I believe it. Why? Because we have to try and maintain a witness. Imagine getting into the presence of the Lord. Imagine you dying tonight after having a bottle of whiskey and get into the presence of the Lord smelling of whiskey. What would he think of you? Oh, honestly, don't get me started. Don't get me started. Okay. Okay. Verse 21. Walk submissively, not rebelliously. Walk humbly, not selfishly. And then verses 21 to 33. Walk in harmony, not in disunity. I am just, I'm just dropping these out because time's going. And I don't want you moaning. Anyway, how can I help my church to grow? Well, verse 1 says, be imitators of God. Be imitators, not counterfeits. Verses 3 to 5, be loving, not lustful. Verse 6, be discerning, not deceiving. Verse 7, be separate from, not associated with, or be apart from, not a part of your own life. And verse 8 to 13, be light, not darkness, or expose, not be exposed. Because I tell you, if you're walking in darkness and doing their own things, I guarantee you, God will expose you. He does it to anybody, it doesn't matter who it is. If there's secret sin there, he will expose it. We've all, we've all found that out. So here it is again. Number one, follow God's example in everything. Number two, walk in love like Jesus did. Number three, live clean. Number four, talk clean. Number five, don't cancel yourself out. Number six, don't be taken on by others. Don't be fooled by others. And number seven, don't, part of, don't be part of the wrong company. Number eight, you're different now. Live differently. <laughs> Live differently. <laughs> Walk in light as children of the light. Try to find out what pleases God. Step back from what is wrong. In fact, tell them why you're stepping back. I'm a Christian. I don't do that anymore. A lot of Christians don't want to do that. Like the two secret disciples on Sunday night. They're bound to peer pressure. They're hiding in the dark. They're coming to Jesus by night. They're in fear of the Jews or their own countrymen. Brother and sister, don't even go there with your, with your conversation. Let the light in you expose the darkness in others that they may see the light and want what you've got. Paul speaks continually here, again personally now, and he continues with the contrast. Verse 14, be awake, not asleep. Verse 15, be wise, not foolish. Verse 16, be effective, not wasteful or squanderous. Verse 70, be switched on to God, not clueless. Verse 18, be filled with the Spirit, not cheap alternatives. And verse 19, be vocal, not silent. Verse 20, be thankful, not unthankful. And then walk in harmony, be submissive, be submissive not rebellious. Some things are brought. I'm just going to read something to you. Here's the message translation of what we've just read, okay? Watch what God does, and then you do it. Like children who learn proper behavior from their parents, mostly what God does is love you. Keep company with Him and learn the life of love. Observe how Christ loved us. His love was not cautious but extravagant. He didn't love in order to get something from us, but to give everything of himself to us. Love like that. Don't allow love to turn into lust. Setting off a downhill slide into sexual promiscuity, filthy practices, or bullying greed. Though some tongues just love the taste of gossip, those who follow Jesus have better uses for their language than that. Amen? Don't talk dirty or silly. That kind of talk doesn't fill our stay, or fit our stay. Thanksgiving is our dialogue. I had to take people off the door there years ago 
because they were making innuendos about women's privates walking in the door. I said, you talk like that in Pakistan here. They're not here anymore because we don't want to stand for that. Now, we can all have a clean joke, but you say amen. Amen, I, I'm not a prude because I love jokes. I love, I love having fun. But there's a line, and you know the line. You know when you're crossing it. And it's not right. But just say amen to that. You can be sure that using people or religion or things just for what you can get out of them, the usual variations on idolatry will get you nowhere, certainly nowhere near the kingdom of Christ, the kingdom of God. Don't let yourselves get taken in by religious smooth talk. God gets furious with people who are full of religious sales talk but want nothing to do with him. Don't even hang around with people like that. You grope your way through that murk once, but no longer. You're out in the open now. The bright light of Christ makes your way plain. So no more stumbling around. Get on with it. The good, the right, the true. These are the actions appropriated for daylight hours. Figure out what, the will, what will please Christ and then do it. Don't waste your time on useless work, mere busy work. The barren pursuits of darkness expose these things for the sham they are. It's a scandal when people waste their lives on things they must do in the darkness where no one will see. Rip the cover off those frauds and see how attractive they look in the light of Christ. Wake up from your sleep. Climb out of your coffins. Christ will show you the light. So watch your step. Use your head. Make the most of every chance you get. These are desperate times. Don't live carelessly, unthinkingly. Make sure you understand what the master wants. Don't drink much wine that cheapens your life. Drink the Spirit of God, huge drafts of Him. Sing hymns instead of drinking songs. Sing songs from your heart to Christ. Sing praises over everything. Any excuse for a song to God the Father in the name of our Master Jesus Christ. Out of respect for Christ, be courteously reverent to one another. That's how to live the Christian life. That's how to walk the walk and to talk the talk. As Paul was in Miletus near Greece, on his way to Jerusalem, he called for the elders or the leaders in the church at Ephesus. And he gave them a prophetic warning. Listen to this prophetic warning. You think he was living in our day and generation. He says in Acts 20 verse 28. Therefore take heed to yourselves. And to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. To shepherd the church of God. Which he has purchased with his own blood. For I know that. I know this, that after my departure, salvious or grievous wolves or revenous wolves will come in among you, not spurring the flock. Also from among yourselves, men will rise up, speaking perverse or misleading things, to draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore, watch and remember that for three years, I did not, not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. Paul was telling them there's an apostasy coming, there's wounds coming in, there's also men among you will rise up. The apostasy had already begun or begun. By the time you get to Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 to 7, where Jesus writes to the church at Ephesus, they've already left their first love. This wasn't a mistake. When you leave something, you know what you're leaving. This was intentional. They knew what they were doing. They stepped, they stopped loving their Lord as they did at the beginning. What a powerful church at the beginning. What a pathetic church at the end. What a lesson for the people's church in the What a lesson for your Christian walk and mine. Revelation chapter 2, verse 5. The Lord Jesus calls them. This amazing, apathetic church back to the place where they had fallen to repent and do the first works. 
The first place as the beginning when they were first seen. The first love was loving Jesus with simplicity. And the first works were serving Jesus together as a church. Their talk and their walk. Oh, may you and I and the People's Church of Newton Abbey never leave our first love. And never leave our first walk, living or walking in his footsteps. May we serve him, love him, worship him as we do our daily walk from day to day. That's what I see in this chapter. I know I've thrown a lot of things. Every one of those sentences are is a sermon in itself. You could spend a year on this chapter because it's the dubious. But I want to ask you tonight, how's your walk? How's your walk? Are you walking distant behind him like Peter did? Remember, Peter followed Jesus at a distance. And he ended up in their own company. Warming his hands at their own fire. Saying their own things. Denied the Lord three times. And then he ran out because the Lord turned and looked at him. And the rooster crowed. He turned and looked at him, and Peter burst into a flood of tears because he knew rightly what Jesus said would happen, happened. And he ran out weeping. How's your walk with God? Are you walking at a distance, or are you walking in his steps? I know what I want. I was out walking today, praying, and almost like crying on the God, Lord, let me follow you for the rest of my life. Help me to walk in your footsteps. Help me to live the way you live. Let me be a reflection of you to my neighbors. My neighbor took down, he was cutting his grass, and he stopped. Here's the first thing he said to me. Ten years. That's amazing. <laughs> this man can cut steel with his tongue. No time for God. That's the first words came out of his mouth. He stopped the wee motor, the wee thing, right on him. And he says, Jordy, 10 years. What you think it? I says, think it? In the blink of an eyelid? I says, no. Still waiting on you. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, then I went on walking. I said, God, how much to walk the walk? You know, there's a lot of people talk and talk. Say everything, but they do nothing. You know, if you listen to them talk and you think they were changing the world, they still the guys like that and the troubles, you know, only for them that they, they, they ended the troubles, they fought the IRA in their own. You know, everybody in, 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 in our area was a commander. <laughs> top man, he's a top man, he's a top man, he's a top man. Not honestly, brothers and sisters, maybe not waffle. May we not be wafflers. May we be walkers, not just talkers. I hope that this has helped you. It has certainly helped me. It refreshed me today. And I said, Lord, please, let me apply your word to my life. And let me live for you. Reflecting Jesus Christ, the light of the world, speaking the right words.